الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين This lesson will be extrinsic allergic alveolitis, inhalation fever and bacillosis by Professor Mahmoud Hani Sleman. I put these three subjects in one lecture because they have resemblance in some aspects and they <coughs> make difficulties during diagnosis. Extrinsic allergic alveolitis inhalation of organic dusts may give a diffuse allergic type 3 precipitine mediated reaction in alveoli and bronchioles. Essential of diagnosis, a link between symptoms and antigen exposure may be obtained from work or environmental history. So these are the sources for knowing the exposure. Antigen can be microbial agent, animal, protein, or chemical sensitizer. Clinical presentation can be acute, subacute, or chronic. So it has insidious onset. All this can be clarified by careful history. Etiology: exposure to moldy hay, Micropolyspora finii causes farmer's lung. To moldy sugar cane will lead to bagasosis. To mushroom dust causes mushroom pickers lung. To bird droppings containing avian serum proteins causes bird fancier lung. To contaminated malting barley aspergillus clavatus causes malt workers lung. Precipitating antibodies against the offending antigen can often be found in patient's blood. Most Frequent causes of hypersensitive pneumonitis by inhaled antigen. The disease is plant products, farmer's lung, bagasosis, mushroom worker's disease, malt worker's lung, maple bark disease, sclerosis, wood pulp worker's disease, humidifier lung. For farmer's lung, moldy hay. The probable antigen thermophilic actinomyces finiae rectifingula, thermoactinomyces vulgaris aspergillus species, bagasos moldy processed sugar cane, bagas, thermophilic actinomyces, mushroom worker disease, moldy compost, thermophilic actinomyces, malt worker's lung, Contaminated barley, Aspergillus clavatus, maple bark disease, contaminated maple logs, Cryptostroma corticale, and so on. Familial hypersensitivity may be due to contaminated wood dust in walls, Bacillus subtilis, and so on. Compost lung, cheese. Washer's disease, wood trimmer's disease, thatched roof disease, tea grower's disease, coffee worker's lung, streptomyces albus, contaminated fertilizer, and so on, detergent worker's disease, and so on. Also, another long list of this disease which are all hypersensitivity pneumonites. For example, office workers, car air conditioner, potato riddles, lung, tobacco workers, and so on, wine, grain workers, lung, fish meal workers, lung, animal products, pigeon breeders, disease, Turkey handler's lung, bird fancier lung, dove pillows, pituitary snuff taker's disease, insect products, and so on. Clinical features of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Acute, i.e. four to six hours after exposure, the patient will have 
dyspnea, dry cough, malaise, fever, and limb pains occur. Examination shows fine respiratory crepitations, fine inspiratory crepitations, fine inspiratory crepitations with little weeds. Symptoms subside in two to three days. Chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis after repeated acute attacks, fibrosis occurs with persistent inspiratory crepitations, persistent inspiratory crepitations, respiratory failure, and core pulmonary. Investigation chest x ray shows diffuse haze initially and later micronodular shadowing develops, progressing to honeycomb. Ventilatory function tests initially show a reversible restrictive defect with low uh, TLCO total lung capacity during acute attacks. This becomes permanent as chronic disorder develops. There is little or no obstruction. Little or no obstruction. The pressure, arterial pressure O2 falls and arterial pressure CO2 is normal or reduced by hyperventilation. There is no eosinophilia, no obstruction. This X-ray shows a section of a chest radiograph in a woman with extrinsic allergic alveolitis. There is a fine hazy ground glass opacification at right base. She had a budge razor, this uh, bird, this bird. At home and area of abnormality resolved rapidly on admission to hospital. Her avian precipitins were strongly positive. Proposed diagnostic criteria for hypersensitivity pneumonitis for clinical purposes. Major criteria exposure to offending antigens. Symptoms compatible with hypersensitivity pneumonitis present. 3. Lung infiltration compatible with hypersensitivity pneumonitis visible on chest X-ray as the last X-ray. Minor criteria, basal crepitation, rally, impairment of the diffusing capacity, oxygen tension, as we said, of arterial blood pressure, restrictive ventilation defect, restrictive ventilation defect, histological changes compatible with HP positive provocation test. Factors to consider in the investigation of a case suspected of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. What are the investigation done? Clinical history and physical examination, cyst imaging, postural anterior and lateral and high resolution computing tomography, pulmonary function tests, including volumes, flows, diffusing capacity, blood gas analysis, serum specific antibodies, inhalation challenge, bronchoalveolar lavage, and lung biopsy. This chest x-ray uh, shows typical diffuse, fine, and poorly defined interstitial infiltrates in a case of recent onset HP. The chest on your left is hypersensitivity pneumonitis in a birth fancier both chests, but the, on your left, chest radiograph shows uh, ground glass opacification, fine reticular opacities, and bronchial wall thickening. B on your right, uh, uh, obtained after one year, this chest X-ray, later shows coarse reticular opacities in, at both lung bases with loss of volume in left lower lobe and a cardiomediastinal shift to the left. Architecture distortion denotes marked deterioration in this case. This uh, high resolution computer radiography of a diary farmer who presented with typical symptoms of recurrent fever, dyspnea, and fatigue daily over two weeks preceding radiograph. This uh, high resolution uh, obtained in a lifetime non-smoker with long-term history of farmer's lung showing diffuse emphysema. Treatment of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. 
best treatment of HP is total avoidance either by substitution or engineer control or PPDs personal protective devices of offending agent PPDs have to offer an efficient filtration of all contaminating dust many carbon filters and facial masks offer such protection but they have to be worn continuously when exposed small surgical mask type paper filters are insufficient if these did not succeed complete removal from the exposure an empirical trial of prednisone 1 mg per kilogram per day with monitoring of chest radiographic and pulmonary function changes over one month after standing trial is a reasonable approach treatment continued until there is significant clinical improvement a bronchospasm present beta agonists should be administered supplemental oxygen intensive care unit may be needed in severe acute cases continued treatment oral corticosteroids are effective in controlling manifestation this is the only medical treatment of hp we described the dose and here is another description of how to give uh, corticosteroid key points of uh, hp in general population extensive allergic alveolitis synonymous with hypersensitivity pneumonitis has annual incidence of about one per, per 100,000 population rates are higher due to occupational exposure where a risk of disease is present hp has reversible acute or, or reversible chronic types relationship between these types is uncertain specific igg antibodies are helpful in identifying causative agent but must be interpreted in light of careful clinical history with attention to environmental exposures most causes of uh, uh, extrinsic allergic alveolitis are microbial both occupational and respiratory specialists should be alert to new sources of exposure recently identified examples include metal working fluids and residents in moldy home now inhalation fever an increasing array of diverse exposures including exposures to metals microbial bioaerosol organic dust and polymers are associated with non-allergic manifestation inhalation fever syndromes non-allergic non-infectious inhalation fever syndromes attack rates suggests those related risk pathogenic features of inhalation fever syndrome include intense pulmonary neutrophilic inflammatory cellular response and activation of pro-inflammatory cytokine networks unlike acute like injury and the hypersensitivity lung disease long-term sequelae are rare long-term sequelae are rare so it is important to distinguish inhalation fever from other illnesses associated with the same or similar exposure circumstances but with very different prognostic and therapeutic complications perhaps because of their benign and self-limited nature self-limited nature preventive interventions received little attention yet inhalation fever syndromes cause significant short-term morbidity and may also serve as a marker of more so serious disease risk marker for more serious disease risk like HP, asthma, chronic bronchitis, airflow limitation, acute light, uh, lung injury, requiring aggressive abatement efforts. Here is heterogeneous causes of inhalation fever. Metal fumes, zinc oxide, contaminated water source, contaminated vegetable ma uh, matter, other causes. All these can cause metal fume fever, uh, splitter shakes, Monday morning fever, bath water fever, some fever, organic dust toxic syndrome, organic dust toxic uh, syndrome, mill fever, grain fever, swine fever, silo unloaders disease, wood trimmers disease, polymer fume fever, and duck fever. Unifying pathogenic characteristics of inhalation fever syndrome Sensitization not required High attack rates with heavy exposure 
blunted response with repeated exposure, the phenomena called tachyphylaxis. Lung is portal of entry and target organ mediating response. Inflammatory cellular pulmonary infiltrate is present. Pro-inflammatory cytokine appear to play a pivotal role. Inhalation fever compared to hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Example for inhalation fever, humidifier fever, with organic dust toxic syndrome, with single it is exposure, single high concentration, attack rates high, symptoms latency four to eight hours, symptoms systemic symptoms predominates, all this for inhalation fever. Tolerance is often occurs. Physical examination, fever, lung exam, normal. WBCs increased. BAL, neutrophilia. Histopathology, bronchiolar, neutrophilic, and histolytic underlying inflammation. Natural history, complete recovery within three days. Bisinosis, source is cotton dust, substance is endotoxin. Clinically, bisinosis is the worker will have chest tightness, cough, wheezing, dyspnea, decreased FEV, bronchitis, malaise, fever, chills, upper respiratory symptoms after initial exposure. Continued bisinosis stages first only on Monday, then persistent greater on Monday, then irreversible all the weekdays. Worldwide recognition of bisinosis among textile. It is present in Europe, Africa, and Egypt, Far East, Indonesia, China, India, North America, United States, Canada, Mexico. It is present all over the world in these countries. Classification of vegetable fibers by source. This may be known for each worker by occupational history. The example is exposure to Cotton, coconuts, flax, hemp, jute, Caesar. This is a schematic outline of some of the key steps in the processing of the three major textile groups. We have three major textile groups for cotton, uh, jute, and Caesar. For each one of these industries uh, is present the processes in this industry. All these processes expose workers to bisinosis, and this is known by occupational history. Vegetable dust causing bisinosis, either cotton flax, soft hemp, and sisal. Bisinosis continued. There is some debate over whether bisinosis classified as a type of occupational asthma. The condition is broader and more complex than other forms of asthma in susceptible individuals. Exposure to dust of cotton, sisal, and hemp or flax can produce acute dyspnea with the cough and reversible obstruction of respiratory airway. It is noticed initially on first day of working week, then subsides on subsequent days. Continued bisinosis. Later with continued exposure, Symptoms also occur on subsequent days of the week until even weekends and holidays are not free of symptoms. Effects are greatest where dust concentrations are highest. This led to suggestion that condition is in part due to organic contaminants of cotton ball as brackets and even microbiological agents as E. coli. Smoking exacerbates the condition. Chest radiography is helpful and treatment is symptomatic. Bisinosis, as described today, is probably a mixture of conditions ranging from true asthma to ex exacerbated chronic bronchitis. This is the occupational history. This is the grades of the disease known by occupational history. It is either grade, grade zero, grade half, grade one, two, three. By asking the worker, you will uh, describe his bisinosis symptoms as being grade 1, 2, 3, or 0. 
treatment and the prevention. Bistinosis displays many of the physiologic features of asthma and the chronic bronchitis. Therefore, it is not surprising that administration of bronchodilating agents as beta adrenergic, beta agonist, e.g., albitrol drugs can prevent bronchoconstrictor responses to textile dust exposure. Antihistamines shown to modify bisthenotic symptoms and airway obstruction. This latter effect is not surprising given the, the histamine releasing action of many textile dusts. Disodium chromoglycate was shown to be a potent agent in preventing acute and delayed response to organic dust. Induced airway obstruction through extracts of CBE and bronchoconstrictions in work are significantly reduced by pretreatment with disodium chromoglycate. Finally, administration of aerosolized steroids, e.g. beclomethazone, has proved beneficial. Prevention of bisinosis is preferable to medical treatment. At present, recommended prevention strategies include dust abatement, medical surveillance with transfer policies for affected workers, Three, treatment of raw cotton to eliminate toxic factors. Current prevention directed uh, implementing first two strategies. Pre-employment screening of workers to identify workers with airway hyperactivity or a pre-existing allergic condition done. A smoking cessation promoted and smoke-free workplace done. Workers with diagnosis of bacinosis, disabling symptoms, progressive lung function loss or established obstructive airway disease should be considered for transfer or removal from high risk areas. Key points of bisthenosis. Bisthenosis is a disease of occupational exposure. It is asthma-like with bronchial reactivity and airway obstruction developing after many years of occupational exposure to cotton dust. The exact etiological agent is unknown. However, the agent is water soluble and is likely to be contaminant of cotton rather than the fiber itself. Bacterial endotoxin is the most likely agent. E. coli, for uh, example. Chronic cotton dust exposure is associated with symptoms other than those known as classical bisthenosis. These symptoms are COPD and chronic bronchitis are more common in cotton workers irrespective of smoking habit. وفي النهاية الحمد لله وthank you for your good listening